Good morning, guys. What's cracking? Out here in the garage, my super doesn't run, her car diff is out, and Toby still needs intercore piping. But that's beside the point for today. Today, we're gonna start off with this. Dual design parts. Joe, thank you very much, or should I say Joel? Running joke from a one video I did. But Joe, thank you very much for this, guys. Um, this guy, he goes so far above and beyond, it's insane. So I know I talked about Freed in the last one, talking about guys making stuff that just is like, wow, like I never would have thought of that. This is another thing. Now, there's something else I wanna show you too. There's a new t-shirt he has, but we're gonna go over this part first. So this is an install tool for the front main seal and then the rear main seal. Now, this also comes with the bolts for the rear main seal. And I'm gonna go over the front first. So here's the tool for the front. It comes, look at the fit and finish on this. Like, look at this, the knurled edges. The anodizing on this is nicer than some of my like, aesthetically pleasing parts like this is going to get messed up there's no if ands or buts you're going to use this it's going to press a seal in if you try to use a hammer when you spin this around if you use the bolt because you use either or it's going to most likely mar up this surface a little bit nothing crazy but it's eventually as a tool it's going to get used so the fit and finish on this this is something that like snap on or like just to, like an aesthetically pleasing part on your car would be so really really just yeah this is nice but let's come over to the front of the engine here and unfortunately, because I don't have another engine here that I can use and I've already got mine mostly up together, um, but this is used to push in your front main seal. Okay, so if you didn't have the gear here, there's a seal that goes into the oil pump, which I showed you guys in the one video. Now, I usually do it outside the car, but when you do it in the car, like you have to play, replace the seal, it's not easy to get seated in. Well, he makes this tool now. And if you see there, on the front of the crank, it has a little keyway in it. The rest of this is machine flat, but you can see there's a little keyway right there. He makes this little rounded out area. He does it on purpose, it's not square, so it gives you a little bit of play. And if you're trying to figure out where it is, he also is smart enough to put, hey, the dual latoon logo is right above that notched area. See how the notch is right there? Right above it is a dual latoon. So if you can find the notch, put the dual latooned, it slides right up and on. Now that's the other thing. Very little play. Now he does understand every crank is gonna be slightly different. No crank is the same. It doesn't matter if it's stock, if it's aftermarket, they're all gonna be slightly different. So that's something you guys have to be aware of. Now, when you put it on the keyway too, there's a little bit of rotation, but it will stop, okay? That notch is in there just to allow you to put it on. The real thing is just to press this on. Now you have two options here. Well, again, with this bearing or this um, gear wasn't here, it'd slide on a lot further, but you have two options from here. You can one, if you have the seal in front of it here, once you get it lined up, you can hit the back of this with a rubber mount and just boop, 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 press it in and it'll stop itself. It's designed to literally bottom out and then once it stops, you're done. Or the real good way is once it's on there, take your boat, seat it in and then crank it down, spin this old girl and it'll push it in. I think that's the better way. I really like that design aspect of this. Um, Hitting it with a hammer, again, it's just, you're tapping with a hammer. I just like somewhere you can just crank it down, you feel it stop, once you feel it bottom out, boop, pull it out, pop this off, and you're done. Very, very awesome design. Again, dual tune there, I think that's pretty neat. But that's for the front. He also sent me one for the rear main seal. So look how cool his stickers are. Again, I'll show you his t-shirt here in a little bit too. His t-shirts will be on the website too. Um, the fit and finish on all this stuff is just really, really cool. Look at his packaging. And this is specific because of Supra, look at that. Dual design parts, super. Like, how cool is that? Sorry, the other side is my address on it there. But he also includes the bolts. Now, I know what someone's gonna say. The rear main seal. It has eight bolts on the back side of it there. And those eight bolt holes are for the flywheel, for when you bolt it up. Now, someone's gonna say, would you really need eight bolts to install the seal? No, but I heard his thought process, the same thing with me is, if he didn't put that, someone would have been like, well, realistically, to evenly put the pressure on, you need eight bolts. You can, guys, you can get away with two. Two will do it. It's, look how big a piece of aluminum this is. Two bolts will be all you need, one on one side, one on the other, and then slowly crank it down till it pushes the seal in. This has enough pressure on it, that's all you need to do. Uh, if you really wanna go crazy, put four in, but that two is gonna be fine. And that allows you to pull the seal in. So you have the mating surface side here. This is the side you'll be putting the bolts on, the bait, bolt faces, this side the seal will go on. And this is where it's gonna get a little hard. So let me put the camera down for a second. All right, so once you slide it on there, there's a crank snout there. I'll take this back off and show you, but you can see in there, and this makes this a little hard, right in there, it'll pull and push in the seal. You'll put the bolts in there behind it and uh, pull it in. Now you can do it on the inch end or off, a little bit harder because you would have to almost feed in the bolts beforehand. So I would feed the bolts in and then just kind of tighten them up. But then once you do that, you'll be able to get a wrench in here and tighten this up and that'll pull that seal in. Again, again, eh. again, it's designed to fit around the crank. So it goes in nice and tight. Sorry for talking so fast. I got a bunch of stuff I got to do here today, but just a really, really nice piece. And again, the fit and finish on this stuff is just Way too nice for a tool, but I love that about him. Never say it's too nice because going above and beyond is what makes him special. 
Also wanted to show you guys, like I said there, about the shirt. So let me pop that up there if I can. The shirt's badass and it actually fits me well too. I just think his stuff's cool. He makes very cool stuff and Joe, I'm telling you this now just because I love you. You need to take a breather, take a vacation. You do so much, man. Thank you for everything, but go take a break, man. You are always on go mode. But let's kind of talk about some other stuff. So you guys probably noticed this car in a video if you watch my TikToks or Instagram, all that stuff. This is Toby Cook's car. This is a original six-speed manual 94 Supra. Um, it is in for intercooler piping work. So if you can see under here, it's getting some intercooler piping done. Coming over here then too. Um, Austin's gonna come over here tonight and finish this up. This car is on full drag setup on skinnies. Uh, the brakes are getting done right now, um, the brake calipers. So there's no uh, calipers on it. They're getting powder coated by Brad. Uh, the wife's car is still down. I'm waiting on the diff still. Uh, it's over at Freed Engineering. Once I get that back up, we have the car up and running. It's been killing me because it's so nice out here lately. And I just, I want to drive the damn thing. It's just, it's so nice outside. I want to be able to drive the damn car. So I'm hoping to get it back ASAP and get this thing running uh, so I can try and enjoy the car. Uh, it's a long weekend. Hopefully get that done. Uh, and I'm really excited for the big one for this, which is trying that ISF transmission out. Um, need to speak to a gentleman uh, and get plates and all this stuff made for it. So there's a bunch of stuff that needs to be done to make that all work. So wife's car is up here. I have my buddy Toby's car here. It's gone. But now we're back to working this. Got it all cleaned up. Car looking good. Those Volano wheels are sexy. And uh, I think I mentioned this a little one, but these are America made, made USA. I love these wheels. It's not perfect though. I think um, I'm going to try another set on my car, another five, set of five spokes to get rid of the works because I want to try something else. I think this fits her car because I call her the high class car. Her car is much nicer. I want to go for more of the boy racer look on my car. Uh, try something different. But we are taking off the straight pipe exhaust here today. Um, been running around with this a little bit. It came off my car. You guys can see the difference here, how truly straight it is. This is a powerhouse racing back half from their exhaust. I have the muffler in the basement and then we just added literally a four inch piece of Stainless steel pipe to make it straight piped. Um, this is the HKS one here. See if I can get back so you can see it. So you see the curve and stuff, and I don't think it's too detrimental. This is 3.85 inches internally. This is true four inch. We then cut off the two bolt flange that's back here and put a V band on so it didn't neck down, so it didn't kill power. But you can see here we had to literally expand the pipe. And even then, excuse me, we had to put this over top of that after even expanding it because this is true four inch. Um, even still got a little bit of leak here. We should have clamped this down with the other V-band when we welded it. It's causing a bit of a leak. It's not terrible. Uh, it is a turbo car, so it doesn't matter that much, but it's still a little bit annoying. Another spot I got to tighten up here is right here. Like, I think that's even... Yeah, it's a little loose right now there. Um, but I'm putting it back on. My wife didn't like it. She said it's too loud, and it is totally different. This is the HKS Racing Exhaust, but that right here, at the end of the day, all it is an HKS High Power Exhaust with a titanium tip. You actually slide that tip off, it actually says HKS High Power, which is one of their quietest mufflers. Um, but I kind of like that because there's no other muffler on the car except this, and it makes a big difference. It kind of makes the car a little bit more enjoyable. So I'm putting that back on. But before I even do that, well, I think I'm gonna wait. Um, I gotta take this wheel off and I'll replace one axle. And you're probably asking next, why are you doing that? So let me show you. Other thing is, I don't know why, but this car holds water in the exhaust so bad. I get E85 and stuff, but look at this. See if you can see the moisture in there. Look at that. Like that is completely soaking wet inside of there. That is insane, like the moisture and stuff. And I, I know factory cars do it too, uh, but the moisture from the E85 is, oh boy, bad. Um, but the reason we're under here is, I wanna try replacing this axle. And I'm getting a bit of a thud feeling. So if you guys, I'm not sure if I showed a video, but I did actually. Got the drive shaft balance, it's good to go. Way smoother, but I'm getting like a dip, dip, dip. No nap, no noise, zero. And I mean a zero noise, you can't hear anything inside the car. So I wanna make that clear. I also replaced the diff. This is a diff from my buddy Colton Glunt. Um, I forget what color is that. It feels a lot longer. So I think it's a GS400 or something like the 3.26 because the, the car feels slower. <laughs> Which kind of sucks. I've got the other diff down at Freed Engineering, but this helped me rule out something else. So we put that in and I still get this clicking or not clicking. I just say it's a clicking feeling. So no noise again, remember, but now under the car, I can hear this. Just listen. It's going to make me a liar. Come on. Would you, think, would you look at that, making me a liar, guys? But it was making a noise there earlier. This is slinging grease like crazy too, so I think the bearings are shot, causing it to make some noise. Because we've rolled out the diff, we've rolled out the drive shaft. Um, 
I don't know what else could be. And it starts to go away once you get to 50, 60, it's just lower, it starts to do it. Now the next thing someone's gonna say is, Ryan, what about the wheel bearings? I don't think it's that, I mean, I've grabbed this wheel, moved it up and down, pushed it in and out, like just manhandled, put my chest against it and just tried to move it. It's not moving. So I don't think it's the wheel bearing. My buddy Alex uh, over at Absolute Driven Performance, he's like, test that, make sure, but I don't think that's the problem. I do have extra axles from when I took mine out, but it looks like the one that I need to replace, which is the short guy here, is slinging grease too. Um, I kept the nut, kept this, I took the tone rings off, but I'm gonna actually order one from Rock Auto. Rock Auto sells this exact drive shaft, shipped to your door, 75 bucks. It, with the tone ring, everything on it, it'll be brand new, rebuilt. It just, to me, just it makes no sense not to. So I'm gonna at least try one. I don't wanna buy both right now. I'm trying not to do the typical super thing and just like, replace it all, might as well. Well, no, we'll take one wheel off, replace one. Doesn't fix it, wait to the next one, replace that one. We, I wanna go through this with you guys to see if that fixes the issue. If it doesn't, then we have to look at something else. Something is causing it to go duh, 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 and it's driving me crazy and I wanna figure it out. I want you guys to come along for the ride as we figure it out. So uh, if that doesn't, we'll go from there. So again, straight pipes off, went ahead. I ordered the, like I said, I ordered the, um, axle and I need to get this all one I need to clean that is literally dirt that's not rust that's just dirt and I didn't know how to pressure wash it up on the lift I didn't want to pressure wash hit my ceiling I need like someone's shop to borrow but the whole subframe needs dropped I want to replace all the suspension uh, a company called p2 is sending me all new lower upper arms everything for this car front and rear so forget all that stuff that's all being replaced all the toe arms everything will be replaced uh, I think the only thing it won't be is these here so what I'm going to do is take those off have them stitch well to make sure they're still good and then I'm going to powder coat those black um, a company out of Australia used to make these, but they don't make them anymore. Mark's Engineering, that's who it was. But they uh, don't, it doesn't look like they're in business anymore. Um, but yeah, put the HKS exhaust back on it here. Um, my wife just didn't like how loud the other one was, which Ed didn't like it either. It was, it was cool on my car, but on an automatic, it just was a little too much. Um, and again, we like to drive this car places, so it just kind of made it annoying when her and I were in the car trying to talk. So getting to that adult age, I guess. But I do think this looks better also. Personally think this fits the car a little better. I might extend out the tip just a little bit more. Uh, I just don't want it to burn the bumper. That's the other problem with the straight pipe. It fit my car perfect, even though it's a PHR kit, for some reason that sticks out an inch on my car, but set in, excuse me, set in an inch. They don't, don't know why, but yeah, very weird. All right, guys, so the new axles are in. That was really quick, actually. Thank you, Rock Auto, getting those so quick. It's pretty awesome. Um, but wanted to do a comparison here side by side, obviously old versus new and a couple differences all around, um, that I noticed right off the bat. But before we get into that, they do, like I said, include brand new. This is the piece that you put on after you put the cotter pin in to actually hold the nut. Well, here it goes on like this. And then it slides through here to hold this all in place. So it keeps the nut from spinning out, which I like. But as you guys can see, tone ring, tone ring, this is what gives you your speed signal, um, which is for your ABS, but we use this for when we're doing trash control. Um, trying to see here, should actually get a mic out, but they look identical, the threads are obviously the same. It seems like it's machined and rounded up the same here, nice and smooth, smooth, has a dust shield, dust shield, looks nice. Uh, the boot's a little bit different, not a big deal. The biggest thing I noticed though, look at the difference in size here. Look how thick this is versus this. Now, just like the factory, these don't come with any coating on. That's why they rust and corrode so fast. So this is black right now, but within no time, that's gonna look like crap. So thought about just spray painting it for now. Um, just cleaning off some brake cleaner and spray painting it so it stays nice. Uh, Cause the rest of it should stay okay. Uh, this looks like it should, looks like it's like almost anodized or something on it, some type of coating or zinc coating on it. Now, the one thing you'll notice is these are lined up, but one is shorter than the other. So it looks like these are slightly undercut. Um, we'll find out if it's going to be an issue or not, but these are 75 bucks for the entire axle with everything, $75. Very hard to beat. Uh, the other thing I noticed is, let's get around this side here, is the caps are different. So see how this is more rounded off? This one is not. See that, how it's kind of like squared off versus this being rounded off like a snub nose? Uh, again, Again, I don't know if that's, is that going to cause me issues? I don't know yet. So until I put it on there, get it up onto the hub itself, I won't know. Um, but it looks to be okay. And again, the splines are correct. Uh, but the biggest thing I noticed is it seems to be a bit undercut. Stretches out enough and all that stuff, but it puts more tension on the CV area. Uh, so I talked to Alex, he uses these and he said he's never had a problem. So we'll see how it goes, but I'm pretty happy with that. So let's throw this one up in, see if it fits. So that slid in incredibly easily. Uh, that was nice. The one thing I'm noticing though, right off the bat, and the reason I don't want to bolt that up yet is this went in nice, but when I put this up towards it here, let's, 
Well, actually it is seating in there very nicely. Nah, never mind. It's actually seating in there very nicely. I thought that piece sticking out, it's got a lot more room in there than I thought actually. So put that up there, get that lined up again. I'll put the uh, clamps on it then and bolt it up. So yeah, I'll put a couple bolts in just to hold it. Then I'll do the nut and th there isn't a whole lot to it. Um, yeah, there just there really isn't a whole lot to it. You can see all the old stuff I took off there. That's lug nuts, everything. There's not much to it. The only thing I'm going to do is clean off the bolts that had sludge on it, which I just did. Uh, so I'm going to clean them off again. But I love the fact, like, look, I don't need any of this now. This all goes away because they supply all new down to the bolt. I love that. So went in pretty smoothly, bent the new cotter pin in. I mean, actually it went in really smoothly. The only thing I noticed, guys, and I'm going to test it here, is these bolts, unlike the factory, every time I hit it with the impact, and in the past it didn't matter, every time I hit it, it kept going in more and more. I spun around four times and finally started to stop, but every time I kept hitting one of those bolts, it would go into like a revolution and a half. So I, each time I spun this around, so every time I got around to the first bolt, there's six bolts, every time I got around to it, I could hit it with the impact and draw it in more. With this, that never happened. So I was like, um... That's weird. Um, so we'll see, but look how beefy this looks compared to that over there. Like it's just a huge axle. So hopefully this works. If not, we'll know pretty quick. I'll hear clunking and then uh, it might just be this diff I got from Colton now, but I'm pretty sure I had this issue before. I had this clunking feeling. If not, then it is his diff and uh, just have to wait till I get my OS guy in one. All right, so I took the car out and it fixed the issue. Um, it went away. Again, it's weird though with the axle that I had to keep like hitting it with the impact on boom, 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 hitting those bolts over and over again. It did finally kind of stop, but I could still make it go in a little bit more each time. Uh, I'm just using that little 3 8 impact too, so it's nothing even crazy. And I used it always on the factory stuff and it, you put it in, it stop, and that's it. It wouldn't go anymore. But it's like it was squishing it almost. So I'm like, mm, I want to think about that, keep an eye on it, but not slinging grease. It's driving smooth again. Yeah, it's kind of happy. So. I don't know. There's still some little things. The, the diff needs to change out though. I need to get the diff back from Freed Engineering so I can get the LSD in. Plus get the better gearing back. It just feels sluggish right now. It just feels very, it just feels slow. It just truly feels slow right now. It's just not, yeah, slower than normal. Uh, obviously I want this running again, but that's not gonna happen for a while. Hopefully I have the turbo kit soon, but um, then I'll need wiring and everything else. But yeah, the car for the most part, I'm pretty freaking happy with now. So we'll see how long it lasts, but $75, it's kind of hard to beat to even use it as a test bed. I mean, $75 for full axle, everything. Um, yeah, so I'll let you not, guys know how it goes. And again, thank you, Dual Design. I really appreciate the product, brother. Um, again, guys, check it out here. I'm excited because now anytime I do a build, I'm going to be able to put seals in a lot easier. And on that note, guys, thank you very much for tuning in today. I'll talk to you later. Peace.